Our society has countless images, ideas, and stereotypes about people of color, and yet none of them tell the full tale. Whether influencing fashion, business, art, entertainment, science, politics, or law, people of color have and continue to positively impact American society on so many levels. And today, we are proud to share their stories in their own words. This is Our Voices on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Our Voices, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the owner and co-founder of Dressing Mermaid, co-host of Woken Free, and the lifestyle editor of Plus Model Magazine. And this show is focused on highlighting the amazing work of powerful change agents who have a great message to share with the world. And today, I'm really excited to be talking all about the realities of dental care, because this has been near and dear to my personal journey in life, but also it's with a woman that I went to high school with and she is the absolute best. So who am I talking about? I'm speaking about Dr. Nadia Rodriguez. She's a general dentist in Midtown Manhattan who focuses on preventative care and patient education while delivering a positive experience for the entire family. Dr. Rodriguez completed her Bachelor of Science at Cornell University and received her Doctor of Medicine in Dentistry, her DMD, from the University University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, UMDN. NJ. She completed her general practice residency at St. Barnabas Hospital in the Bronx, where she was awarded Compassionate Dentist of the Year. She's currently part of the American Dental Association, New York State Dental Association, New York County Dental Association, and the Academy of General Dentistry. Dr. Rodriguez has a strong commitment to using the latest dental technology to help patients maintain a healthy mouth. So with that, how are you, Dr. Rodriguez? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, darling. That is quite the bio. So, you know, back in the day when you and me were, oh gosh, I don't know if you about you, but I know I didn't know, have a clue what was going on in high school. <laughs> but, um, you know, you were really passionate about animals like me. We both kind of share that. So I want to know, like, wow, uh, kind of with your journey, what, what happened to, to lead you down the path of dentistry and become a dentist? Well, yeah, in the beginning I did. I really wanted to be a veterinarian, and I think that with probably, you know, most people's journey, um, it all probably, everyone's journey, I think, starts with advice from their mother. Mm -hmm. And so my mom, being the good traditional Russian woman that that, that she is, Mm -hmm. uh, when I told her that I wanted to be a veterinarian, she said, uh, a veterinarian cannot help me, so <laughs> you need to find another career. There's no way that I'm going to let you become a veterinarian. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so it kind of got me thinking uh, about a different career. What could I do that really help people, help my family? Um, I've always been someone very detail-oriented. Aside aside from love, loving animals, I've always loved art. I lo- I've always loved passing my time doing different little arts and crafts um and so i just started thinking about dentistry and i felt like dentistry sort of fit that mold it it has a lot of uh uh, work with your hands um there's a lot of working with your hands there's uh and there's science which i I love science that's why i chose dentistry Mm -hmm, absolutely and what would you say of all the patients that you've seen has been the biggest challenge for why people just like can't get it together with their dental care regimen so, I mean, I think the biggest problem with patients uh, is, yes, getting them in the door, getting them into the dental office, but it's also patient education. A lot of patients don't really understand why they need to come to the dentist. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of patients have a go-to deli that they go to. Uh, they have their favorite coffee shop, um, but they don't have a, a dentist that they go see regularly. So um, I think that's one of the issues. A lot of times also access to care. Uh, Some patients just don't either have uh, dental insurance to give them the access to care or they um, are... uh, they hear all of these different rumors about how expensive it is, and so they just avoid dentistry as a whole because of that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, why is dental care so important? What What's the bigger impact of why we all should be brushing and flossing away? So, I don't know if you realize this or if other people realize this, but people actually live longer with 
healthy mouth, with, with healthy teeth. Mm. Um, they're able to better chew their food, feed themselves. They're happier. They're more confident. Uh, they're less stressed. Uh, they're able to, to better take care of themselves. Um, so, so taking care of your teeth is, is quite important. Um, they... Uh, if you if you have a healthy mouth, you're you're less likely to have heart problems. If you have um, if you're pregnant, you're less likely to have a uh, low term uh, uh, sorry uh, a short term oh gosh like you can carry the baby longer. You're saying exactly yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so yeah, so for those reasons, that's why dentistry is, you know, important. Yeah, those are huge reasons. Uh, I, I know my husband is always like, get it together, Tasha, because, you know, I'll say for me personally, it's not that I don't care about my teeth. Like, I, I don't have a vendetta against my teeth. But <laughs> what I will say is, you know, I what I find funny about dental care is that, like, you can start the day off with good intentions, right? And then the day just kind of continues on. And then, you know, how do you handle everything where, like, you know, as an entrepreneur, as I do a lot of different things in my life and I don't necessarily have a sleep regimen where it's like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. It's time to go to bed, right? Like sometimes my bedtime starts the next day. And so, you know, did I did I finish the day with my teeth all freshly cleaned? Like, how do you manage like dental care when you have like a very filled schedule? What what are tips that you would say are really important to think about? Well, so I think that's kind of, that, that's a challenge I think most people face. And actually, me, myself, I, I recently just had a baby. And I think that there is, uh, um, it's, it's just when, whenever you are very busy, whenever you have uh, days uh, that are just filled with a, a lot of very stressful days, mm-hmm. um, it, it it is very difficult to keep your your mouth healthy, um, and even from my own experience uh, with the baby, lack of sleep, um, poor food choices, those are all things that are going to contribute to mm. decay, uh, periodontal disease. Um, so for so so it it isn't easy, but if if you keep your teeth. Um, on your mind, and, and if you you think more about it, mm-hmm. um, you're better able to, uh, to to take care of yourself. The key, really, honestly, to a healthy mouth is, is just um, being st- trying to reduce the amount of stress uh, in your life, eating healthy, drinking lots of water, mm. uh, and and really committing to a specific regimen. Absolutely, and congratulations! I didn't know you were a mama. That's awesome. <laughs> I know, I, I know, it. I know. Very, Most very. people don't know, but it's, it's very stressful. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, well, you now just told the world, so yay. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. You are listening to our voices on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Natasha Nurse, and my guest today is Dr. Nadia Rodriguez. So being a mom, being a dentist, uh, I would just, just for everyone listening, uh, you know, how do you, how do you then, what are things that you do to make sure that you prioritize your own, like, healthy mouth and, and, and making sure that your dental care is taken care of? Uh, so I, do, I, I just like, commit to a very specific routine. I make sure that I, I brush my teeth in the morning, at night, that I, I make sure that I floss. Uh, a lot of patients don't realize that having bleeding gums, bleeding while you're flossing, that, that is a problem that, that's not normal. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I floss my teeth, if I ever see any blood, I'm just like, oh, my God, this is horrible. I need to start doing a better job. I'm doing something wrong. Mm. Um, and, and I try to correct whatever whatever it is that I'm doing, um, whether it's eating poorly um, or uh, if I'm just not taking, because you're supposed to brush your teeth really for two minutes every single day. Mm. And so when you're really busy, a lot of people tend to not brush their teeth for, for two minutes. Um, mm. and, and so I'll, I'll just try to, try to tweak my, my routine uh, so that way I take care of, of my mouth. Okay. Now, do you think there are any secrets to avoiding cavities as I currently sit here uh, being told that I, I, I've i developed them and I've, I've, gosh, I feel like I've been to the dentist consistently since I was six, so I'm kind of uh, used to it, but I, I would like to think that it's possible to live without cavities. What do you think? Uh, 
it is definitely possible to live without cavities. Uh, it really just goes to, uh, it, it's all about just having a well-balanced life, diet, reducing mm-hmm. the amount of stress in your life, um, reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you eat. Mm. Um, oh, okay. Those are the things that, that really would help prevent cavities. Interesting. Okay. And what about pain? I know a lot of dentists or people who have to go to the dentist, they kind of quiver with the the idea of, oh my gosh, you know, I have to I have to go under or they're going to stick me. Is it possible to ever leave the dentist's office without discomfort? I've yet to have been able to say yes, but, you know, speaking directly to one, uh, what are your thoughts? So I would say that every single patient is different. Mm-hmm. Um when you go to the dentist, you're not supposed to feel pain. Um, if mm. you are feeling pain while you're at the dentist, there might be an underlying condition that you just might not be aware of, um, or, or perhaps um, that's the that, that's the the poor health condition that, that you have um, that's causing this pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, if you have some disease, your your dental cleaning might not be as comfortable as if you had healthy gums, mm. uh, but. Coming to the dentist itself, it's like coming to get a cleaning is not supposed to be painful. Um, the hygienist, dentist, we do have different methods mm-hmm. on how to clean teeth in a relatively pain-free uh, environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we try our best to tweak our our systems so that way patients can get their nice, healthy, clean teeth uh, with as little pain as possible. Okay, okay. And what are things that you wish people uh, like knew about dentists? If you could like make a PSA, what would you say? Um, I would say we know that you don't want to be here, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I would say that I am always really excited to see patients to prove them wrong and to show them why they should be at the, at the dentist and, and why they should be here. And mm-hmm. it's always such a joy when patients are delighted to come back and a lot of my patients end up being like my best friends I've met some really great people Mm. uh, you know as my patients Um, you know I guess it's just it's the mentality that I have as a dentist like I when I'm when I see patients I feel like I'm not only their dentist I'm like their family friend Um, I really try to bond with people on a deep on a deeper level Mm, I love it okay and would you uh, say that for for people who are scared uh, you know how do they or or or, you know maybe fed up with uh, not maybe having the best uh, experiences in the past how do you go about finding the dentist for you what what are like important steps to take so when you're choosing a dentist, I think you should find someone that has the same philosophies and goals as you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, if there's, a, you should just find a dentist that that listens to you, that listens to your concerns, and that addresses whatever problems and concerns that you have. Uh, you should never feel rushed at a dental office. You should uh, feel comfortable. You should feel happy to see that dentist that person every six months you should be excited really i mean that's honestly how i think most of my patients feel when they come into my office they're they're happy and excited to see me that is awesome i don't you uh, you might need to off, open up an office in long island girl I, <laughs> <laughs> because you're making it sound like a party wait a minute now <laughs> I mean, it is, it is. I mean, we, like, in our office, I mean, I would like to think, you know, we, we, we play really good hit music. Hey. It's not too crazy. <laughs> um, but it, it's not your traditional dental office music. Um, and, and it does help patients calm down. And they, they do really enjoy being at the office and spending their lunch break there. Um, I, I really don't think it's something that... I don't think my patients dread coming, and I think they actually genuinely don't mind, and and they and they enjoy it. I love it. You are listening to our voices. My name is Natasha Nurse. More with my guest, Doctor Nadia Rodriguez, next on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. <laughs> We are live outside the home of Joe and Rosie Goddard, where a pretty big tickle fight broke out just minutes ago.